Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in for another episode. This is one of my favorite times of year to fish, some of your hottest weather across the country. And one of the reasons for that is we've got a lot of grass growth. You know, if you live up in my neck of the woods, we've got a lot of weed lines that are really setting up well. This year we've had an early spring, which means the grass is growing really well. So there's a lot of fish setting up on those outside weed lines or in the grass itself. If you happen to live down in the Florida area, you've had grass year round. If you happen to live out by Lake Mead, there's even tons of grass in Lake Mead. Uh, so the point here is no matter where you're at in the country, there's a good probability that there's grass in a lake that's not too far from you. Uh, so what I wanted to do today was talk about some of my must have grass baits. For me, I really try to keep grass fishing pretty simple. Uh, part of the reason for that just comes down to the, the fact that the fish are generally going to be grouped up. And when you find them, they're going to be more active. And there's not that many bait choices that seem to work extremely well. Uh, part of the reason is if you've got exposed hooks, you generally get snagged in the grass and it can disrupt your cast or at least do so on a regular basis, which means you're just not being that efficient. So you're really looking for a lot of uh, weedless presentations or techniques that allow you to fish a really specific spot. So for example, when I say a really specific spot, a lot of times what that means is you're fishing a hole in the grass. Maybe that hole is caused by a hard spot. Maybe there's a boulder, maybe there's uh, a dock and the dock provides so much shade that the grass doesn't grow under the dock. The point here is you're making a specific cast to a target you're letting your fit your bait sit in that target zone. If you don't get bit, you reel in, throw to the next target. And when that happens, you, you absolutely have to have a wacky rig. In this case, the Berkeley Max Scent General, the five inch size is one of my absolute go-tos. Uh, and you can you don't necessarily just have to fish it as a wacky rig. You can also Texas rig this and throw it into the same holes if you want your bait to be a little bit more streamlined. But anytime you're fishing grass, you need to have some sort of soft stick bait like the general, just a dynamite presentation. I mean, doing that exact technique is how I won the Mississippi River event uh, last year. So I won, you know, about $100,000 by throwing a wacky rig into holes in eelgrass. It was just a basic, simple thing, but I had figured out kind of how to work the bait and where the fish were setting up based on the current and the holes, and it just worked out great. But that is a technique that you can do across the country. Really, really good technique. It's a very easy technique to fish. Whether you're a beginner or a pro, it doesn't really matter. You can fish that technique. Now, you can also do that by using a topwater frog, like this Poppin Berkeley Swamp Lord, one of the best frogs on the market at this point. Uh, but I love to fish frogs across a lot of that grass. So if you happen to have matted grass or grass that comes up and touch the top of the, the surface, so you've got a little bit of emerging grass mixed in, a frog is going to be your friend. Comes through the grass amazingly well. You know, they're, the hooks are basically weedless, so you can throw it anywhere from, you know, cattail clumps or uh, uh, like buggy whips or through pads or milfoil or hydrilla. It doesn't really matter. It could be pond weed. It could be coontail that comes up to the surface. The point here is a frog is going to be your friend. Now I will fish this in a couple of ways. I'll fish it similar to how I just described the wacky rig. So if I've got really specific targets, I'll throw the frog in there and just pop it around and try to keep it say in that hole in the grass or around just that clump of grass. But at the same time, if you're got if you have a lake that has giant grass mats and you're trying to locate fish, a hollow belly frog is going to be your friend because you can cover large areas relatively quickly with a frog. And when you get a few bites in a, in an area, a few blow-ups, you can a lot of times slow down and then pick that apart, uh, pick that grass mat apart where you got those bites. And when I'm doing that, that's when I'll pick up this guy right here. So this is just a tungsten weight, the one ounce tungsten flipping weight by Picasso. So I'm looking for a heavier weight with generally a smaller soft plastic. So this is the three inch Pit Boss, one of my absolute go-tos. I like a little smaller profile because that helps me punch through the grass. If you throw a big, say, creature style bait with a lot of appendages and flapping parts, 
that can get caught on the surface of the grass and it just doesn't punch through as well. So I actually like to go with a small profile bait like the three inch size, and then I'll have it on a heavier weight. It doesn't have to be a one ounce. Really what you're looking for is a uh, tungsten weight because it's a smaller profile, but the you want to find the weight that allows you to punch through the grass on a very regular basis without getting hung up on the surface. If you're finding that a lot of your your flips aren't actually going through the canopy of the grass, go up a little bit in weight and keep going up until you get to the point uh, where you find that your bait is, I would say, 95% of the time punching through the grass. So you're being very efficient. If you go too heavy, you can really overpower that area and your bait's gonna fall too fast. You're gonna create too loud of a presentation. So there is a sweet spot to find, uh, but your uh, Texas rigged, flipping weight on a, you know, some smaller creature bait to punch through those areas in the grass. That's one of the best presentations. If you've got milfoil that's thick and clumped up, if you've got hydrilla that's thick and clumped up, uh, you know, it could even be really thick pads. And another thing to keep an eye out for, if you're on a lake that's got a lot of grass, a lot of times what you have happen are you get floating grass mats. You get a lot of grass that gets torn up from boat traffic, from weather conditions, and that will get pushed into certain areas. So you may be going down a bank and find that you've got grass mats, floating grass mats of grass that are not connected to the bottom, and you can punch through it with a heavier weight. Absolutely phenomenal presentation as well. So once I've got those three uh, things kind of covered, then there's a, the moving bait aspect. So if you're fishing an area where you've got submerged grass that's not topped out, but you're trying to cover big expansive areas of grass, one of my absolute favorites is a swim jig. If you've got a swim jig, that will come through the grass really well. It allows you to cover a lot of water and it just is an effective bait in grass. And it doesn't have to be uh, just grass. It could be pads, it could be your buggy whips, it could be fishing around, uh, cane or you know bull rushes it really doesn't matter uh but your your swim jigs are just going to be your friend fishing grass it allows you to fish a moving bait where you wouldn't necessarily be able to fish say always a spinner bait or even a chatter bait if your grass is too thick you know those things will get caught up in that grass but you can generally fish a swim jig through it really well and i highly recommend going with more of a bluegill color. So this is the core tackle swim jig that we make uh, in our guilty pleasure bluegill color. The key here is a lot of times when you're fishing these grass mats or these grass flats, you tend to have a lot of bluegill. And that's one of the primary forage species for the bass in those areas. So I really like a bluegill colored swim jig when that happens. And then again, similar to what I was saying before, where you could use a frog to kind of cover big mats to locate where the fish are at, and then you can pick those areas apart. You can kind of do the same thing with the swim jig. So if you find an area where you're getting a lot of bites, a lot of times you can slow down and pick up just your, your old standard reliable ribbon tail worm. Uh, one of my absolute favorites for not just fishing across flats with grass, but also fishing weed line edges. Cause we know weed lines can become a really good place to fish for summer fish. Uh, a lot of times those weed lines either indicate there's a drop off, a bottom contour change, or a bottom um, composition change, or usually some sort of current, you know, where the current's fast enough where the, the grass just can't grow. So those weed lines are going to be really key areas. And the key thing with a Texas rigged worm is it allows you to fish through that grass so well. In my opinion, a worm is one of the absolute best baits to actually just feather through the grass, swim it through the grass and identify those areas that are really good. I can fish a jig, I can fish a craw, I can fish other baits in those areas, but a worm just comes through those areas so clean. It doesn't have to be just a ribbon tail, it could be a speed worm. We know how good speed worms are in that kind of type of condition, but generally your longer, skinnier profile baits can be absolute dynamite when fishing grass. So those are the baits that I love. I generally keep it very simple at any time I'm fishing grass during the warm water periods. Uh, obviously, there's some other baits you can throw, uh, and they usually work better along the edges of the grass. So whether you've got a top water or a crankbait, uh, even your chatterbaits, things like that that are generally not as weedless when fishing grass, 
can can be fished in those areas. But these are just baits that no matter where you're at in the country, no matter what type of grass you're fishing, these baits are going to excel. So I'll put links for these in the video description. If you guys are looking to pick some up and want to support the channel, that's a great way to do it. Uh, otherwise, guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed today's video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and stay tuned. We'll have a new one coming out tomorrow.